God bless you. Thank you for coming and joining us. Excuse me, joining us for another Q and A with Pastor Don. Hi, I'm Pastor Don Smith, Pastor of Fresh Manor Christian Center. I want to say God bless you. I pray your day is going well and uh, that you're able to accomplish all your tasks that you may have had to do today, whether your day is winding down or just getting started. I pray that either way that God's hand be with you and His grace overshadow you. We want to say uh, uh, thank you again as well. Now, you may be watching, you may be a live watcher to watch us live tonight, or you may watch us later tonight or later in the week or so forth. We want to say thank you too, just for your viewership. Um, we have a good, good, good uh, Q&A for you tonight, and I'm uh, looking forward to it. And as always, we want to share with you different ways that you can um, connect with us via the, the uh, social media websites or social media platforms to uh, send in your questions. Now, Q&A is exactly that, Q&A, question and answers. And so it's designed, the, this ministry's uh, function is to be an, an outlet for people of all, uh, whether you're persons that go to Fresh Manor, you don't go to Fresh Manor, you know somebody at Fresh Manor, you don't know anybody at Fresh Manor, to send in Bible questions and some life questions, depending on what it might be. Um, but to send in questions based off the Bible, kind of like, I'm sure many of you have heard of maybe Hank Hanegraaff, he's, he's passed on now, and other you know names like that to do. Of course, we're nowhere near that large a platform as they were, but or he was rather, but it's in that vein too. So, because many people today have a lot of questions. You know, there's a lot of things going on in this world. Um, you know, we just, you know, in this country, other countries, all over the globe, there's a lot of things happening. Even, even to make it more localized in your communities, there's lots of things happening. In our communities, there's lots of things happening. Um, so we just, we have a lot of questions. As we read the Word of God, we'll get even more questions. And things will come to our knowledge. And we're like, okay, well, what is this? And what time is it, Lord? Uh, you know, is this, a, is, 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 is this the time of your return? Or, or Lord God, you know, just different things like that. So we just want to just um, uh, invite you to send in your questions. Send in your questions. That is, that the Lord spoke to us to start the Q&A for this purpose. Um, is, an, is an extension of the church, which is Fresh Manna. Um, it's one of our ministries that are connected to that. So again, we want to welcome you and invite you or a friend or a relative, a co-worker, a casual friend, close friend, platonic friend, whatever, send in your Bible questions. And we'll see what God's word has to say about that. All right, now if you are, we'll go over our, our ways of doing that. If you are a YouTube subscriber up to our YouTube channel, thank you. For your subscription if you have not subscribed we'd love for you to do so um if you choose not to but you just want to continue to watch the videos god bless you we appreciate you as well in any event we would love for you to hit the thumbs up button what that thumbs up button does it helps uh promote the video so more people can be um can see it and receive it so if, if we have you know if it blesses you it'll bless someone else for sure so that's um, if, you're, so if you're a YouTube person, if you're a Facebook person um, and you are watch us from our Facebook platform, we want to invite you to uh, join our friends list, share the video with your friends and family and, and you know, on your, your friends list. So again, if it touches you, it'll touch somebody else. And that's on our Facebook platform. Then there's the others. There's a TikTok. Now, if you are a TikTok user, you can find us at FMCCMI. That again is if you are a TikTok person. Um, if you are an Instagram person, you can at the same uh, find us at FMCCMI. That's on Instagram. Now again, all these platforms, you can send in prayer requests. You can send in your questions on all these different or comment on all these things. Then there's Twitter. Um, you can find us at FMCCMI on Twitter. And then, of course, there's our ministry's website, which is www.fmcc-mi.com. Um, so you can, that, that one there, obviously, there's more, um, more to see there and a lot more different, different, 
different things to uh, look into there. So those are six ways you can get your question into us, your comment into us, your prayer request into us. Now, if you're a live watcher, then you can also send in a question while we are live streaming. And if the um, good Lord would bless us to have the wisdom to answer the question, we'll do it if he blesses us with the wisdom to answer the question. If he doesn't give us the wisdom, then we'll just have to say, we'll have to let you know we'll pray and get back to you the next time around and God gives an answer because we never want to wing it when it comes to the word of God. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure we hear from the Lord and give you what we believe the Lord is saying, not just, you know, off of the top of our head type thing like that. Uh, we don't want to move that way. So um, those are your ways to, hit, uh, to reach out to us. Um, and we wish to encourage you to, to do so. Um, you know, there are lots of voices in this world today. All kinds of voices. The Bible itself is under assault. Uh, I don't know. Don't believe the Bible, or people wrote the Bible, or this or that, or you know these other books over here. Or, these are not the real Jews. These people are the Jews. And da 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 da. da. And this one started this war, and that one started that war, and you know, all there's all kinds of things in the world today. All kinds of things. And see, we have to sift through all that to make sure we're hearing from God. There's so many different entities out there. So many different voices. So many different uh, situations. And so you really have to work hard and ask God to help us to be fine-tuned so we can listen in intently and sharply what the word of God is saying. Again, I know the word of God is under assault uh, because there's all different kinds of Bibles and books and whatever, and this one says this and this one says that. Well, the Bible actually said it would be like that in the last days. He said they would say Christ is over here and then Christ is over there. And he said men would be um, um, increasingly knowledgeable. And uh, the Bible calls it this, says it this way, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge. Um, so it'd just be, you know, all these kinds of things. Um, and I'm not knocking knowledge. You want to be knowledgeable, be knowledgeable. But make sure we stay rooted in the Lord. Make sure we stay rooted in that. And, and, and not influenced by so many other different situations. So we're going to go to our questions for tonight. Um, I pray that uh, you would follow along with us and allow this, this uh, Q&A to be a blessing to you. Again, if you have a live question and you'd like to send it in, the moderators will get it and we'll see what the Lord has to say. Well, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to come before God's people. We thank you for this opportunity to share from the words of life, to bring forth what we believe you would have us to say in regards to the questions that have come in tonight. Now, Lord, we are truly inadequate to do this. We can't do it unless you help us do it. We need you to help us, Lord God. We need you to guide us, direct us, we need you, Lord God, to strengthen us, Lord God, and give us, bless us with the wisdom because we don't ever want to try to do something on our own. And I pray, Lord God, as we share that it would be enhanced, it would be your spirit speaking through us, that we would decrease, that you would increase. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Our first question tonight is, why is there a devil? Why is there a devil? The short answer is because he rebelled when he was Lucifer. That's the short answer. But to put more meat on the bone, um, let's look at a couple of things. Well, starting in the book of Ezekiel, again, that's the short answer, but we're going to give you the more meat on the bones answer now because there's more to it than he rebelled. There's a lot more to that. So let's just look at this. Ezekiel 28 and verse, start at verse 14, says this. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. So that's talking about him as Lucifer. Now remember, 
the, the devil was originally, or Satan was originally Lucifer. He was a created archangel of the Lord. He was created by the Lord and he was a created archangel. Here is saying about how beautiful he was until iniquity was found in him. So now let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah. Let's go to verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? See, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So now here's where the rebellion part comes in at. And so he decides that he's going to go into heaven and overthrow God and be just like God. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12 now. Revelation chapter 12 and let's go to verse 7. It says this. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. And they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon, excuse me, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. 12. Key verse. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having, having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So now, why did I read all that? That's to let you know who he actually is. How he got started. See, if we don't know how something got started, then we don't know how to deal with it. Originally, he was an archangel. And the name Lucifer is a heavenly name. But then when his nature changed, and, he went, and this corruption began to come forward. That's what he says, I'm going to go into heaven. I'm going to overthrow God. I'm going to be like him, ex, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now, this is the result of his pride and rebellion. But this is what must be to have salvation. This is absolutely must be to have salvation. If there's no devil, then there's no separation from God. It's because of the devil is what brings death, which becomes separation from God. This spiritual death, which becomes separation from God. Uh, and those that are of him never manifest. We never have and we'll never have a choice. So you have some folks that's the seed of God. And then you have some folks that's the seed of the devil. If there's never a devil, then the ones that's of that seed would never manifest themselves. They would never be revealed. And in order for God to have perfection, every seed must be manifested. Every, sort of like every stone has got to be turned over to see what's underneath there. Everything has got to be cleaned out. So now let's look, let's go to the book of Genesis. Go to the book of Genesis. third chapter and uh, um, let's start in verse 1 now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made and he said unto the woman yea have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden 
But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God knoweth that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, there's choice right there. Eve had a choice. Either to stick with what God said or be deceived by virtue of her intellect and follow what the devil said. She had a choice. If there's no devil, then there's no choice. And in order for there to be a choice, in order for us to have choice, there has to be something opposite of what God is. If there's never anything opposite, then those that are of that seed would never manifest. Then you would have corruption that would be eternal. And God, in, in corruption can't be eternal because God's eternal. That's why eternal life outside of God, yeah, there is no eternal life outside of God. Only, only, only when we have Christ do we have eternal life. All right. Um, let's stay in Genesis and go to the third chapter and go to the 14th verse. And it says this, and the Lord God, the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou shalt, uh, go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. 15. And I will put enmity, or it make uh, enmity, or, or make like a, an enemy, or natural enemy between the two. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and the woman, and between thy, thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, I just want to deal with the bruise the head and the bruise the heel part. We're not going to deal with all the other uh, uh, parts of this thing. We're just going to deal with those two parts right there. When he says bruise the head, that in the, in the word, in, in word bruise in the Hebrew it means to strike or to crush. Christ, when he says he will bruise your head, he's talking about he will cru because this whole verse 15 is actually talking about Christ, what Christ will do and what the devil will do. So when he says he will bruise your head, that's Christ would crush etern and eternally defeat the devil. Christ can eternally defeat the devil. When he says he'll bruise his heel, that Satan will will take Jesus to the cross. We have to remember it was the spirit of the devil that got in the people that had them take Jesus to the cross. It was God's plan, though. It was all part of God's plan. If there's never a devil, then there's nothing to inspire the people to take Jesus to the cross. And if he doesn't go to the cross, then there's nobody to redeem what Eve and Adam did in the garden. Man would stay like that. And that means we would be eternally separated from God. We'd have no pathway back to God. Jesus had, there had to be a devil to take Jesus to the cross. There had to be. If there is no devil, then he has no cross to go to. If he has no cross to go to, there is no salvation. If there's no salvation, then we will never have choice to serve God. We'll serve God because there is no, we, we have no other alternative, but the seed, now you're getting into the seed and all that. So we, 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 won't, we won't go too far into that tonight. So now let's look at how the Lord will bruise his head. Let's look at uh, Romans, the 16th chapter now. Let's go to Romans, the 16th chapter. Romans. Okay, we just got a question that came in, and we'll address that one um, momentarily. So please stay with us. So let's let's finish here. Um, uh, where are we going to? Romans sixteen and twenty. We're going to Romans sixteen and twenty. Romans sixteen and twenty says this. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The God of peace, that's our Lord, 
will bruise. That's that same word again. Satan under our feet. That means he'll defeat him eternally. Defeat him. Go to Colossians. The book of Colossians. Chapter 2. And verse 15 says this. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's when Jesus was inside the earth for three days after his death. He descended, the Bible says, he that ascended first descended into the lower parts of the earth. And when he did that, he did two things. He led captivity captive out after his resurrection. And then he spoiled the devil and defeated the devil and took the keys of death and hell from the devil. This is where he's talking about now. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. The in it is in hell and defeating them in hell and, and, and made a show he defeated the devil. So that's Colossians 2.15. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says this. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, see, through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. See, the only way he could do that is he had to die. But in order for them, you say, well, if there was a devil, then he would never have to die. Well, and also, if there was not a devil, did every seed, would the, the the nature of every seed would not be revealed. And by God being omniscient God. See, there are several words that are very descriptive of God. One is omniscient. That means all-knowing. Another one is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at the same time. And the third one means he's almighty. That means he's all-powerful. But his omniscientness, his omniscient meaning he knows each person before they ever take a breath. He knows what they're, the, the, the seed of their spirit, what they're going to be. He knows that. He knows that. And so by God being a fair and just God, see, that's the thing we always have to keep in mind. God is a fair and just God. He wants everyone, allows everyone rather to have the right to choose what pathway they want to take, even though he already knows. He already knows it, but he has to allow us that right to do that because mankind is the only thing that has a soul. Every other form of life has spirit, but it doesn't have a soul. But within that soul is the ability to choose. That's why he created man different than everything else. When he told, he laid Abraham, not Abraham, he laid Adam down, he, fell, he put him to sleep, and, 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 um, no, excuse me, not, I stand corrected. He, the Bible says he formed man out of the dust of the earth. He gave him a body. Then he breathed in him the breath of life. That's what the Bible says. And he says, man became a living soul. That's where choice comes in now. That's why Eve had the ability to choose. She had the ability to choose. So when God gave him, when God created him with that ability to choose, there had to be something for them to choose from. If there was no devil, they'd have no nothing to choose from. They would just be all God. And in and, and, and of course, we could say, well, in hindsight is 2020. Well, God being fair, you have to look at things. We have to remember God is fair. God doesn't want us just to serve him because we just have absolutely no other choice. He wants us to do it out of the love of his heart. He sent his only son into the world because he loves us. That's why he loves us. He manifested himself a body to sacrifice himself because he loves us. And he wants us to love him back. Not because we, we have no choice, but because it's what I want to do. Don't you, when people do something, would you want somebody, look at it this way. If you're going to get married and the man or the woman, would you want somebody to marry you because they have no choice? Or would you want them to marry you because they love you? I'm going to say I want somebody to marry me because they love me, not because they have no choice. That's called a shotgun wedding. And, and so God wants us to love him because we want to love him, not because we have no other choice. So in order for there to be another choice, there has to be something opposite of him. 
And that whole creation of Lucifer, God knew he was going to turn. But there was a purpose to it. There's always a purpose. All right. Uh, let's look at 1 John. Not St. John, but 1 John. I use this scripture a lot in the Lord here. St. John chapter 3. Verse 8, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. The devil has many works, ploys, plots, and schemes, many things. For the plan of salvation to come and, and man had to be redeemed, Satan could only, Satan was the only one that could offer an enticement, offer an enticement for man to follow others in God. He was the only one that could do that. So then the question is, well, how does he offer his enticements? We're going to run through some scriptures really quick here. Stay in 1 John and go to chapter 2, verse 15 and 16 says this. Love not the world, neither the things of neither the, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world so one way he entices us is with the world the things that's in the world another way he entices us is second corinthians second corinthians um, chapter 11 verse 14 and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Another way he does it, he entices us, is he tricks on the form of an angel of light. In other words, he makes himself look like he's God. He impersonates him. That's another way he entices us. Another way, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says this, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that thou worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind whereby the nature of the children of wrath, even as others. So he's the prince of the power of the air. What's that mean? He's, uh, all all your, your, your social medias, your TVs, your radios, your thought patterns, all those kinds of things. Like right now, there's millions of radio waves, millions of uh, internet waves, 5G, TV, radio, all those things flow through the atmosphere, as well as do the spirit world, as well as does the spirit world flow through the atmosphere. He is the prince in power Prince and power of the air. Prince and power. So that means he has the power of suggestion. He has the power of imagination. He has the power to cause us to daydream. All kinds of things like that. That's why we have to keep on the mind of Christ. We have to have the mind of Christ. That's another way he entices us. Yet one more. St. Luke. Now there are other things. I'm just giving you a little, just a little, little overview here. Of how we, this is so many different ways how we're able to have, uh, choose other things other than God. St. Luke, um, chapter 9, verse 25. For what is a, for what, for what is a man advantage, for what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Gain the whole world. I got this going on. I got that going on. All prosperity is not good prosperity. All things that appear to be blessings are not always blessings. There are a lot of things that come our way that look good, but are not good. There's an old saying that everything shining is not gold. And sometimes things can look really good, sound really good. Well, I prayed for this. I prayed for this. But it really, we, I did pray for it, but it wasn't according to God's will. And then Satan caught that and then he sends it. So they, these are different ways that he's able to cause us to make other choices. 
we must be free in order for us to really follow the Lord we must be free to follow God because we want to just two quick scriptures revelation no let's go to st. Mark 16 real quick st. Mark 16 verse 15 says this and he said unto them go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned so in other words that's a choice we have a choice to believe it or not believe it. That's a choice that comes to us. It's our choice which one we're going to do, whether we're going to receive it or not receive it. All right. Our last one for this question is in the book of Revelations. Revelation 22, 17 says this, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hear it say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. There it is again. It's all invitation. It's up to us. It's up to us. It's up to us. All right. So we had a question that just came in, and usually I address the questions that come in at the conclusion of our our, our, our uh our setting tonight so don't don't worry i haven't forgot about you i'm gonna get to you but we, we usually we do that we do the questions that have already come in we take them in order so the ones that have already came in we address those and then we the ones that come in live then we address those at the end so the next question is this what are the different types of prayer and how to you and how to use them good question now in order for me to properly go through that that's really a bible study but so we're just going to give you an overview so I'm going to go through and I'm going to name different types of prayer. Before I do that, if you're really interested in understanding a lot about different types of prayer, this is a great book to get. It's called The Believer's Prayer Manual, written by Flynn Cooper. It's a great book. You can get it on Amazon. And it talks about all different, different, many different types of prayer. It's a really great book. You can get it on Amazon. Again, it's called The Believer's Prayer Manual. And so uh, it'll give you a real good understanding about what prayer is. It'll give you a real good understanding about different types of prayer. Um, it's a great read. It's a really, really great read. And I would encourage you, if you're really interested in prayer, to really, really to purchase this book and then use it in court because there's a lot of scripture in the book too. You have it with your Bible and you go back and forth like that. Again, it's called the Believer's Prayer Manual. It's a great book on prayer. All right. Um... So now, let's look at some different types of prayer. Now, I'm going to read through them, and I'm going to give you some scripture to go with each one, and then in your own time, you take time to look up those uh, script, those the, 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 the scriptures because, again, to really break each one down and go into each one, if that's, a, that's Bible studies. Not just a Bible study, but Bible studies, plural, more than one. So we'll, deal with a, we'll just go through some. Uh, there's the prayer of agreement. You can find that in Matthew 18, 19 and 1 John 5, 14. Then there's warfare prayer. You can find that in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Then there's binding and loosing. You can find the prayer of binding and loosing. There, that's Matthew 16 and 19, six, chapter 16, verse 19. Then there's fasting. Fasting can even become prayer. 2 Corinthians 11 and 27. Supplication is another form of prayer. 1 Kings 8, 22 to 27. Chapter 8, verse 22 to 27. Uh, and these are just some scriptures for each one. There's many scriptures for each one. Uh, prayer of consecration. Exodus chapter 29, verse 43 to verse 44. Then there's corporate prayer. Acts chapter 4, verse 24. Then there's the prayer of faith. James, chap James chapter 5, verse 15. Then there's the Prayer of praise, Psalms 150, verse 6. Then there's travailing prayer, uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. Then there's intercession prayer, Isaiah uh, chapter 53, verse 12. Then there's praying in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Then there's the prayer of decreeing, that's Job chapter 22, verse 28. 
Then there's the prayer of meditation. That's Psalms chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Then there's the prayer of remembrance. That's uh, Psalms 119, verse 49 to verse 50. Singing can become a prayer. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Then there's worship, uh, worship prayer. That's St. John chapter 4, verse 23, verse 24. Then there's the prayer of petition. That's 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17 and verse 27. Then there's the prayer of thanksgiving. That's Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. So that's about 18, 19 forms of different forms of prayer there. And again, in your time, you take uh, go through and go back and read your scriptures, and uh, ex and it shows those different types of prayer there. And so I'll just now that we went over that, I'll just go back now and I'll just elaborate on a couple of them. Uh, let's look at for a moment uh, singing being a prayer. Go to First Corinthians chapter fourteen. I'm not going to go over all of them. I'll just hit hit on a couple of them here. Um, First Corinthians chapter fourteen, and go to and what is it? First Corinthians fourteen and uh, fifteen says this. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and will, and, and I will sing with the understanding also. See that's. What the Bible even goes, another scripture says, making melodies in our heart unto the Lord. Now, that's not singing like, you know, stomp, stomp. That's not that. That's just exhorting yourself or all, the, all that kind of stuff. I'm a soldier and all that. That's exhorting yourself. But this is more along the lines of the more sovereign worship type stuff. Like, we are standing on holy, you know, stuff like that. And you, and, and it becomes a, it becomes a prayer because your spirit begins to break and you begin to, you begin to, you begin to lift your hands and tears and all that. And it just, it becomes a worship. It, be, it, it begins to, it, it, it ascends up high. So that's more in, in regards to that. Not, no, no, I'm calling him up and telling him what you want. That, that kind of thing there. That's, that's a different thing there. So that's really when you're talking about um, when he means singing in prayer. Then um, let's look at another one. Um, uh, let's look at decreeing prayer. Let's just look at that one. Job 22, 28. That's, a, that's uh, Job twenty two twenty eight says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. In fact, let's start in verse 27. Thou shalt make thy prayer, prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows, and thou shalt also decree a thing. See, decree a thing. Now, we I know folks, we can go a little bit you know, off on that, but if our spirit is right, we won't do that. And then decreeing a thing is, you know, Lord, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree deliverance for my dad or my mom, my brother, whatever. I'm de I decree it according to the word of God that salvation will come to my loved one. Lord, I, I am decreeing that. So that's, 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 you know, I know some people use, well, I decree this house and this car. I mean, you could do that if the Lord tell you to, that's fine. But, um, so that's this decreeing. Then there's, let's look at meditation real quick. Let's look at meditation in Psalms chapter 5. Psalms chapter 5. Verses 1 and 2 says this. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. Now, this is not the meditation going, um, um, all that. Not that. This is when my heart is, 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 and spirit are locked in on God. 
And so I, 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 I'm just, I'm sitting there and I'm just pondering on his goodness. And I'm, I'm gotten real still and my thoughts are really clear. There's not a lot of different, whatever going through my mind. It's real, real clear. And it's like this. And let me see. It's Isaiah. Go to Isaiah real quick. It's like this. Isaiah 26 and 3 says this. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is an everlasting strength. So see, keep his mind. See the mind. In my mind, I've, I've trained my mind. I have the mind of Christ and I've trained that. To where now when I'm meditating, I'm sitting there, I'm just being real quiet. I might have some sovereign instrumental type music going or at least some very soft if I've got that or if anything at all. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just listening to my spirit and waiting for God's spirit to speak. And I'm just meditating on his goodness. I'm meditating on the fact he saved me. I'm meditating on, meditating on the fact he's healed me. He, he, he's made a way out of nowhere. I have a roof over my head. Whatever it may be. So it be, that transitions into a form of prayer. And all these are forms of prayer. Forms of prayer. Now this is not like one denomination where say this kind of prayer and you get a healing. Say this kind of prayer and you get forgiveness because you commit adultery on your wife. Say this kind of prayer because you murdered somebody and, and do this and rub these, these beads and all that. This is not that. That's that's a whole other thing there that we're not even going to talk about that tonight. That This is what we're talking about here is this is all Holy Spirit in, in, uh, uh, in higher Holy Spirit inspired rather. Holy Spirit in, inspired. So again, um, you know, then we like we've got the intercession and then the unknown tongues. The unknown tongues prayer in First Corinthians chapter four, verse fourteen. Let's look at that one real quick, and then we'll move on. First uh, Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse two says this. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto men, excuse me, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Unknown tongue is just that. There's no language on this earth for that. And that really should be done unless God's going to interpret it. There's going to be an interpretation that should really be done um, within a person that you know you get a bunch of people together and everybody just starts speaking in tongues out loud and then there's no interpretation that's confusion because your spirit is being edified now if there's going to be an interpretation then god will bring that forward and then there'll be an interpretation otherwise we're just edifying ourselves so that's another form of prayer so again we went over it's about 19 of them there uh, we encourage you to get the book again the book is called the believer's prayer manual by flynn cooper you can get that on amazon and these, um, hopefully you got a chance to get the scriptures that we said that we called off there. And you can go back in your own time and look at all these different forms of prayer. Um, I just, if I were to take time to go through each one and explain each one, how you use each one, it, it, it would be quite a few Q and A's to do that. So we, we, for sake of time, we're not going to do that there. So there, that's where we're dealing with the different types of prayer. Now moving on to this question here. In the last days, men's hearts wax hard. How do you know if your heart is getting hard? Good question. Well, let's look where that, that originates from. Go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. And go to verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Well, we know love comes from the heart so now he says one thing he says right there he says iniquity he says because iniquity shall abound that means an overspill of it the love of many shall wax cold so that means there's going to be an over there's an over proliferation well, what is iniquity you have to understand what is iniquity in the first place iniquity is a pattern of a particular transgression that a person may have or transgressions. So iniquity is different from just a singular sin. 
It is a pattern of sin, a lifestyle of sin or transgression. Now, the Bible says in Psalm 66, let's look at Psalm 66. In Psalm 66. Psalm 66 and verse 18 says this. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, again, iniquity is a pattern or lifestyle sin. Let's say you got somebody that has an issue with lying. And they just constantly lie. Now, there's, I'm going to be honest with you something tonight, ladies and gentlemen. There's no such thing as a white lie and a lie. A lie is a lie. Whether you consider it big, small, medium, tall, whatever. A lie is a lie in the eyes of God. There is no white lie. That's a myth. It's not true. If I regard iniquity and I have a problem with lying, that's iniquity. That's a form of iniquity. That's one form. Now, again, there are lots of forms. I'm just, I'm just using that one. I'm just using that one. Another form of iniquity. Somebody could be a gossiper. They just can't stop talking about people. They just can't stop being in other people's business. And they just, and they just, they just can't help themselves. Whatever. Well, actually, they can help themselves, but they don't choose to do it. That is another form of iniquity. That's another form of iniquity. Well, why don't you talk about sex and drugs? Because those are too. But we all there's a lot of other stuff other than sex and drugs and alcohol. They can get us messed up. A whole lot of other stuff. Not just going to bed with somebody. But and so these different things. These different things. And so he said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, that means I've embraced it now. You know, a lot of times we'll make excuses for ourselves. And, you know, like, you know, just excuse it. Well, I ain't no, nobody perfect. See, we, we really shouldn't say that. We really, really, really shouldn't say that. We just, by God's grace, completed a series here at Fresh Manor a couple of weeks back. It was a five-part series. It was over five uh, weeks. And it was called What Godly Perfection Really Is. I would encourage you to go and watch that series so you can really understand the myth or the mis the misspeaking of nobody's perfect once you watch that series you'll see that that's not a true statement that is not a true statement and so a lot of times when it comes to certain things we'll use that excuse well nobody's perfect nobody's perfect and we shouldn't do that we shouldn't do that so iniquity regarding iniquity that's one way we one way we uh, our, heart, our hearts wax cold. Another way is when we begin to be aloof from God. We kind of get aloof from God. That's um, let's go to Acts, the fifth chapter. Let's go to Acts, the fifth chapter. Acts, the fifth chapter, and verse 12 and 13 says this. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in, in Solomon's porch. 13. And, and of the rest, durst. That word durst means dare. Dared no man join himself to them, but the people magnified the magnify, uh, uh, magnify, uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I got lost here, hold on. Uh, Join himself to them, but the people magnified them. So in other words, the people, the people, they, they some folks begin to draw back when the miracles started happening. And they begin to walk aloof or far back from God, from rather than the apostles. So one way, another way we can, when our hearts are starting to wax cold is we don't run and we kind of stand, kind of become standoffish, so to speak, when God is moving um and 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 then we miss the move of god that means because we're drifting away now we're slowly kind of like a tire with a slow leak in it and you know we used to want to be right in the middle of whatever god was doing but now we're kind of like oh yeah god moved oh that's nice okay wow okay somebody got touched that's cool 
And so that, that fervency is kind of waned off. I mean, it used to be like, wow, I wish I was there. Really? What happened? See, that's, that's different. That's different there. Um, so aloof. Another one, another way is when we begin to reject the gospel. Let's go to St. Mark. St. Mark chapter 5 and um, verse 15. Starting verse 15. This is right after D uh, Jesus had cast the devil out. And there came and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with devil, with the devil, and had the legion sitting clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And also concerning the swine. Because remember the demons ran and, and they asked they, after they got cast out, when they get cast out, could they go into the swine? And they did. And the swine ran down into the hill into the water and drowned. 17. And they began to pray to him to depart out of their coast. They wanted Jesus to leave. Even though he had just healed this, he had just delivered this man who had been wreaking havoc. Because he's full of demons. They said, oh no, you need to go. They rejected it. They rejected the anointing. See, when we reject God's presence, well, how do we reject God's presence? God is moving, but I'm so caught up in my own self that I'm just, I'm, my hands is lifted, but my mind is somewhere else. My, my eyes is closed, but I'm thinking about all kinds of other things. I'm not trying to function in. I shouldn't be praying, but I'm watching the football game, basketball game. Tennis, badminton, whatever. I, you know, I'm, I'm doing all, I make excuses. I, I should be at God's house of worship, but I said, well, my job is having a, a, a barbecue and they only do that once a year. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I could do it just one time. And then one leads to one, and then two, then three, then, and then it's on and on. But when I make that choice to go to the company barbecue, I've already missed the last couple of Sundays. So I'm already, this will be my third Sunday in a row. See, I see I'm starting to reject it now. I'm starting to reject it now. Uh, another one, St. John chapter 6. St. John chapter 6. Starting in verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up, up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickeneth, but the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. And who should betray him? And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They got offended. The Bible says back in Matthew 24, that many will be offended in the last days. That spirit of offense. We get offended. And then we kind of like, you know what? You know, I don't like the way they talk to me. You know, I don't know. Uh, that way the pastor preached. You know, I, mean, I don't like the way he said that. You know, I don't agree with all that like that. No, no, no. I'm going to go find me something else. Or, no, I just need to stay away for a while. So that's, I, you know, as a pastor, I, 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 we hear these kinds of things. I just, need to, I just need to stay away for a while and, and get myself together. I, I don't know how we do that when it comes to the things of God, but people do what they do. And so, so, you know, but it's really offended. We've allowed ourselves to be offended. Well, you know, but if anybody should have ever been offended on this earth, it was Jesus. If anybody, the disciples, I mean, they, they killed these people. They really did put them in tubs of hot oil and boiled them and all kinds of things. I mean, they, what they did what they did to these people, but offended so if i'm walking in offense or i'm easily offended 
see that's those are those are good signs those are signs that maybe i'm starting to get a little cold in my heart because i you know i'm letting stuff that shouldn't bother me shouldn't bother me now you have to remember something too beloved satan's an antagonist he's always going to talk to you i don't care how anointed a person is you could have just got out of jesus's lap and and he manifested himself in front of you and had and sit down and talk to you like he did with the, the prophets moses and all that Satan's still going to come right in there and the off and bring offense. Yes, he will. And we have to understand spiritually that, that, that just because you speak in tongues or just because you uh, whatever in the church or do whatever we do, that don't mean the devil's not going to come with stuff. This is a war we're in. This is a battle. Satan's constantly going to do stuff. This is his world. So he's not just going to stop and be like, you know what? I'll let those guys go. They're okay. Let him go. He's not going to do that. He's going to constantly try to nitpick at things and get us to see. Oh, they were talking. Pastor, Pastor was talking about you. Or, oh, no, no. Those brothers, they all, they got a they click there. They don't like you. Or those women here, they got a click. They don't like you. you know, or somebody rolled their eyes at you. Let's, let's, let's play devil's advocate. I hate using that. But let me just say that. Let's just say somebody did roll their eyes. Let's just say some people did stop talking when you walk by. Are we there for the people? Or are we there for God? Which one is it? I don't need to be there. I can find God all on my own by myself. We can find God. Or we don't actually, we don't find God. God finds us. But we cannot edify ourselves on our own. That's why there's a body of Christ that we belong to. And that's why it says, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? So we got to have these things. I'm my own preacher. That's nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible. Well, the Bible says that you don't need no man to teach you. In 1 John chapter 4, you don't need no man to teach you. Let the anointing teach you. You have to understand in that context, he was talking about false teachers. False teachers that had crept in. False teachers. Everybody's not a false teacher. I'm through with pastors. I ain't got nothing to do with pastors. They're all crooks. Really? So you've been to every church in your area. You personally know every pastor and the dynamics of their church. And so you, and you, you have firsthand knowledge that every last pastor in that city is a crook or a homemonger. Nine times, 100% of the time, no, we don't know that. We just throw them all in the basket and say, you know what, I'm done. Well, how come when we got divorced and we got we got remarried, we didn't throw all the women in the basket and say, I ain't no more good women, I ain't getting, I ain't doing no more. But we sure went and got married again. Or men. We sure went and got another man. Or when we got fired off a job, we didn't say, you know what, I ain't working for nobody ever again. But we sure went and got another job. Why can't we do that and not look at it and say, you know what? Maybe I've had some bad experiences in some churches, but that don't mean they're all bad. Let me keep being, let me pray and let God lead me to where I need to be. Because God's got to have a witness out there somewhere. He's got to. All right. So that is offended. Um, and here's our last one. Turn to Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 I keep hearing in my spirit that somebody is might be somebody in their spirit saying you know what I, that I, I need a husband or a wife to survive I don't need no church to survive I don't need that but I need this I need that I need a job to survive let me help you in the Holy Ghost Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 21 says this and the eye cannot say unto the hand I have no need of thee 
nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which are which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncommonly parts have more comeliness. For our, for our comely parts have no need, but God tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And where the one member suffer, all members suffer with it. O one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. So he's saying right there, how can the hand say, I don't need the eyes? Say, we need each other. So just like you need that man, you need that husband or that wife, you need to be part of the body of Christ. You need to be a functioning part of the body of Christ too. The Holy Spirit just told me to drop to share that one there. All right. Let's go to our last one. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 38 says this. Now, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. But we are not them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So another way, now I'm giving you five different ways. Another way that our hearts, hearts can wax cold is by drawback. Drawback. God called us to do something and we just keep making excuses why we don't want to do it. And we keep drawing back from it. Eventually, if we continue in that pattern, God will lift his anointing off our life. Because he says he has no pleasure in a drawback spirit. And then we keep provoking him. And then eventually God will say, okay, I've warned you enough now. So those are just five ways that, I, that we've given. There's other things, but I think that's good enough. And I pray that nobody, if we, no, none of us are in any of that category. And if we are, guess what? There's God's grace and you can pray. And you can talk to Jesus and Jesus will help you like that. Jesus is quicker to help us than we are to bat an eye. The scripture even says in Psalms, no, it's not Psalms, Isaiah, he said, I'll answer you before you even ask me. He actually says, let me, I, I think it's, I know it's in Isaiah, a letter part of Isaiah. Let me see if I can find it by God's grace real quick. Let's see if we can find that. Yes, Isaiah 66, 65, and 24. And it should come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they yet speak, I will hear. Look at that. God said, I'll answer you before you even open your mouth. Ha! Huh. Don't tell me God don't answer prayer. Before you even speak it, God said, I'll answer it. If, while you're in the midst of talking, the answer's knocking on the door like an Amazon or UPS or FedEx delivering the package. It's already waiting for you. See, all we got to do is ask. That's all we got to do is ask. So it doesn't matter where we are, we just got to ask. And he's quick to send an answer. Amen. All right. So now the one question that came in says, uh, via live rather, came in live via the internet here. In Luke 252, it says that Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Why would Jesus need to increase in wisdom and stature? Wouldn't he already be full of wisdom? Okay, well, let's read St. Luke. Okay. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and, and in favor with God and man. All right. Now let's let's actually look at this whole uh story. 
not excuse me i hate using the word story let's look at the whole episode here let's go stay in the same chapter and um go down to verse 40. let's go to verse 40 in luke chapter 2 we'll start in 40. and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of god was upon him and his parents went to jerusalem every year at the feast of the passover and when he was 12 years old they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days and as they returned, the child Jesus carried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother went, knew not of it. But they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answer. See, they were astonished. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Dealt with us. Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. They've been looking for him for three days. This was this, this be look how long over three days now forty nine, and he answered them. Look what he says. How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? So let me stop right there. See, Mary forgot. See, that's the type of the, the the church and the bride, the church and God. She forgot. He don't belong to you. You're just a caregiver. This is God. That's why she she she, she just forgot. You know, sometimes we forget stuff. So she she forgot. That who she was talking to that was in her was of the Holy Ghost. That was God. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. See, they, they didn't even catch it. Now, verse 51. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject, subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. So, Jesus, God, this is how he pulled one over on the devil. He came as an infant child. He didn't come as a come into the world as a crown fully grown prince. He came as a baby in a manger wrapped in a swaddling cloth. A swaddling cloth is not even a garment for humans to wear. That's actually something that they put on the mules, on horses, for them to, to, to wrap around the animals and stuff. So it wasn't, even, it wasn't even for humans to wear, but they didn't have nothing. They was poor. They didn't have nothing. So they wrapped the king of glory, who was an infant now, <laughs> in something that was intended for an animal. There's a purpose to that, though. Then the angel of the Lord Gabriel speaks to Joseph and tells him, take them and go into Egypt because they're going to destroy all the male children and all that. Now, that was God. He was a baby. That was God. Even though he was an infant, it was God. But there was a reason. There was a reason. So they get up and they go into Egypt and, to, and they kill all the baby boys like they did during Moses' time. They kill all of them then. Then he comes back. That infant was just as much God as Jesus here at 12 years old. The purpose, see, and the purpose you have to understand is he had, in order for him to be the perfect atonement, and be touched by us, he had to follow the exact same pattern that we do. He couldn't deviate from that. That's why he was subject to them. He had to follow the same thing, even though he was God. Notice the scripture also says he made himself a little lower than the angels. For the what? For the purpose of suffering. For the purpose of suffering. Now you notice this wasn't when Jesus went into the wilderness. That didn't even happen until about 18 years later when he turned 30 years old. Then he went into the wilderness after he was baptized. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. At this point, he's the word. He's always the word. But he's the word right here. He hasn't, he hasn't gone on into the next thing yet. But he's still God. Still very much God. Still the commander and creator. Look at that powerful the god that created every molecule that ever existed made himself an infant child 
let's just say he was weighed seven pounds, 13 ounces when he was born. I'm just throwing that out there. Or eight pounds, 13 ounces. That God that created all, every atom that's ever existed, every atom that created every being that's ever existed, made him a, his own self a body that weighed eight pounds. Uh, again, that's me saying this. Uh, uh, when he was a baby, eight pounds and 13 ounces. An infant. And put himself in a position to where other adults would have to care for him. Look at the complexity of God, but yet the simplicity at the same time. That's why he said, I'll hide it from the wise and the prudent and I'll reveal it to babes. I'll reveal it to them. See, the wise folks say, that don't make no sense. That uh, He should have had a legion of angels there to protect them against Herod's people and all that. And they, oh, In fact, he didn't even need a legion. A legion he only need one angel because the in, uh, back in Ezekiel's time, one angel wiped out 186,000 people or 86,000 people with one sword in one night. Another time during David's time, one angel wiped out 70,000 people and he just swung his sword one time. Another time, the deaf angel came and killed all the children, all the, 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 uh, Pharaoh, all the Egyptians, children, boys. So he didn't need a whole legion, he just needed one. Just one. Just one. In fact, he didn't even need that. He was God. But he stripped himself of all of that. <laughs> Woo! He stripped himself of all that so he could suffer. He stripped himself of all that so he could be in atonement. He stripped himself of all that so he could be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. So he could know what it means, what it feels like to be abandoned, what it feels like to be hurt, what it feels like to be frustrated, what it feels like to be let down, what it feels like to be rejected. He stripped himself so he could feel it. That way he can intercede for it. Oh, he's a mighty God. So that would be our answer for your question here in 252, uh, Luke 252. Amen. God is good, folks. I love him. What about you? I truly do. I love him. Amen. I pray that this blessed you tonight, this Q&A. We love to hear from you in the future. Uh, the Lord blesses us. We do this on Tuesday nights. It's, you know, every rare once in a while we might do a different night, but we try to stay consistent here. So we want to hear from you. Again, this is not just for fresh manna people. That's not what this is just for fresh manna. This is for the body of Christ. And we're not here to compete doctrines and tell somebody's church you're wrong and all that. We're not here to do any of those things. We're just here to share the word of faith. That's what we're here to do. So again, if you want to, if you, there are different ways you can connect with us. There's the YouTube. If you, you know, find us on YouTube and our YouTube page, uh, subscribe. If you have not subscribed, we'd love for you to do that. If you don't choose to do that, please hit the thumbs up button and show the video your support and, and it'll touch more people. Then if there's the Facebook, if you're a Facebook watcher, share the video with others. Let it bless somebody else. Then of course there's TikTok. You can find us at FMCCMI on TikTok. And then of course there's Instagram. You can find us at FMCCMI on Instagram. Then of course there's Twitter. Um, you can find us at FMCCMI Twitter. Now I believe on Instagram and TikTok, Instagram and Twitter, we do a, a, a daily scripture. Is that correct? So on Instagram and Twitter, if you want to get a daily inspirational scripture from what the Lord gives us here, Fresh Manna, go to the go to the uh, Instagram or the Twitter, and you can see that daily. We do it Monday through Fridays. We do a, a, a inspirational scripture for the day, for each day. So that's on. If you'll find that on Instagram and Twitter. And then, of course, there's our ministry's website, and that's at www.fmcc-mi.com. All those venues, you can leave questions, you can leave prayer requests, and you can leave comments. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you. You be prayerful. Stay, stay connected to God. But above all, remember this. Jesus is coming. Let's be ready to meet him. God bless you. We love you.